Good morning. Welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. Okay. Audio. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Good morning and welcome to Archetype Pattern Workshop. My name is Ignacio Ramirez. I'll be your moderator for this morning's session. This is a school and it is not a church. Either we affiliate with a church or religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to proving the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of the eternal pattern, purpose, and plan operate throughout eternity unto this present day. Now, this school is the result of a divine panoramic vision and revelation given to Henry Clifford Taylor in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We have established branch schools throughout the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Archetype Pattern Workshop established in February 2021. Now, in this school, we use and teach by the true and original names and titles for the Heavenly Father, the Word of Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name for the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the Word of Son is Elohim. It also been improperly substituted by God. And the true name for the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God, they are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. This means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but Jesus is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part into a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce a sound made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is spirit, and in this state, He's incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized in his pure spirit state on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud is no particular or descriptive sheer before. Now we have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the Word or Son. A super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This shape and form can only be seen in a divine vision and understood in a divine revelation. Later on, the self same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, who the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know this name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, 
What was the name of the Savior through the time that he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title could be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children, children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and showed him a tabernacle pattern in a vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And we go forth in this school to prove that everything in the universe operates according to the structure and function of the streetfold tabernacle pattern and absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now the ten names of the school are as follows. One is to help you find and know Yahweh or Elohim as he really is and as he actually exists. Two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. And seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the dragon, the devil, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. And eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation of faith that was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. And ninth is to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there was no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan, speak the truth. This morning we have prayer by Dr. Irene Ramirez. Our scripture lesson is Matthew the third chapter, our scripture reading be Dr. Nanette Ramirez. And we have a selection of music after the prayer. Good morning and good afternoon, class. We'd like to ask Yahweh Elohim to guide us, to show us which way to go, and to learn to teach us so we can learn through your son, Yahshua, which way, what direction to go, what to learn of him, so we can be able to escape this, this chaos that's going on in the world. We know we look towards him, that we can do it. So we ask this in your son's name, Yahshua Messiah, let us all say, Hallelujah. <coughs>
class. Good morning. Good morning, class. Um, I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible containing the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trina, the Scripture Research Association. I'll be reading Matthew, the third chapter. In those days came John the Immerser, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is near at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of Yahweh. Make straight in the, des in the desert and highway for our Elohim. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle, girdle about his loins. And his food was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were immersed by him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his immersion, he said unto them, O generation of vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham as our father, for I say unto you that Yahweh is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed immerse you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to, to bear. He shall immerse you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be immersed of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be immersed of thee, and comest thou to me? And Yahshua answering said to, unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. Yahshua, Yosh when he was immersed, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I have read Matthew, the third chapter. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, morning once again, and we're happy to have Dr. Siobhan, Siobhan with us. Uh, uh, before we get call the next uh, first speaker up, I just want to go into a little bit of something that's been on my heart. Is always try to lay a foundation for the next speaker. Okay, and one of the things I was thinking about over the weekend going through that we've learned is. In our moderation, we talked about this divine panoramic vision that was given to Henry Clifford Kinley in 1931. And for him to explain what he saw, he had these charts made up, okay? In pictorial and form, this was the first chart that was made. It was made on a, a, a bed sheet, okay? They still have the original one in uh, Los Angeles. But anyway, if you look at this chart, you see all these uh, illustrations. And uh, if you go, you can see that it's Adam and Eve in the garden here. And it's set up in a threefold manner. One, two, three. All these charts have Noah in the ark. One, two, three. 
then we have this tabernacle, which is very important, okay? Because uh, I know that the next speaker will get into this, this tabernacle here, and this chart, which is called uh, 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 migration chart, okay? In other words, children of Israel migrating from the land of Egypt into the wilderness of Sinai, okay, then into the promised land, or Canaan's land, okay? And all these events are happening, it's not just stories, they're historical events, which is in the Bible that we supposedly read every day, or all the time. And ask a question in your heart, those that are new watching this thing on the broadcast, do you understand what you read when, you, when you're looking in the Bible? Especially in the New Testament, or so-called New Testament. Do you understand what you're reading in there? Can you put it together as far as when are there two, when somebody's speaking one of the apostles, what age, or what are they talking about, what time frame this is? See, Dr. Kennedy, he saw all this stuff in his vision. And he had these charts made up, which are very important. And little by little, these charts will be big like this. But this is where we have the age dispensation chart, okay? Depending on each age and dispensation, things occurred. We have the angelic creation and the physical creation, which make up the universe. And starting with Adam all the way to the Messiah, these events were happening according to the tabernacle pattern. Now, Dr. Kinley had these charts made, and he was teaching by these with illustrations. You have the first Adam. I know over there you read it in uh, Romans, you read about the second Adam. First Adam, second Adam. Okay? What's, what's the thing behind this? Okay? That's why you got to read. And then when you come to these schools, we'll go through these events. Okay? Uh, I said this was the first chart. The second chart was this one here, the migration chart. It was told to me from uh, different people that they would ask the founder of the schools, of this teaching, what happened before this? Adam and Eve here. Okay, because that's where it began. And they were, what happened before this? Dr. Kelly had this chart made. Okay. Now, there's another, a couple more charts I have to make, but the, the next chart is going to be a 40 plate chart. Okay, which is, uh, it's 40 plates. Okay, and it's three fold ladder, but it's from beginning to end. Okay. When he, I didn't think about it, so, yeah, I mean, there's things we could explain what happened before here, and it begins with, Moses here seeing a vision of Elohim, okay? And then it breaks down into the creation, six days of creation, and before the, what happened, cosmogony, all this all the way down to here's Adam and Eve in perfect peace in the garden, okay? And to understand that, you have to do some reading, okay? And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you understand what was before this. Okay? So, just to give you a heads up, this is the school, and these charts are results of this divine panoramic vision. Okay? Now, our first speaker this morning will be Dr. Will Williams.
and the awesome, colossal, stupendous panoramic region of Revelation given to us by Yahweh our Elohim. And I appreciate the first speaker, he, he probably thought it was an extended moderation, but he was, he was really the first speaker. And I echo what he had to say because what you're looking at here is an illustration of a divine vision of Revelation. And I was asked before class to go into a subject, you know, which is really one of our tenets of this doctrine, and that being the fulfillment. As if we hadn't been doing it for the last three weeks, and when we went through Joshua Yasha, that was the institution of fulfillment, right? But she wanted to get more persnickety about it. So, you know, I don't know if she's trying to embarrass me or put me on the spot, I don't know. But, but we're going to take our time with this. That's why I switched the scripture lesson. We were going to read the fourth. We're going to read the fourth chapter, but the third chapter leads into the fourth. And, uh, and what I want to do. I need a plate. I need plate 29. That's what I'm going to do. I need plate 29. And, um, and we're going to go into this because she asked about the fulfillment of Yashua. Okay? And, uh, and as I thought about it, I figured, well, I've done this before, so we're going to get this one plate, plate 29, which is part of the scripture lesson she read. We're going to read some more scripture. We're going to go through this point by point to see how Yahshua the Messiah is fulfilling the scripture. Uh, maybe right there. See, that's, yeah. Oh, you're gonna need a clip. <coughs> Unless you want to pop it, but at least tell me. Over here, Pop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yes, come up here. <laughs> yeah, all right, I want you to take this, I want you to clip it on the black part. So, yeah. Gentle giant. Uh, maybe a little lower, if you bring it, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, okay, thank you, my oh, man. All right. be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, mm -hmm. and comest thou to me? And Yahshua answering said unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Alright. Now, do we have the word fulfill? Yes. Okay. Okay, so fulfill means um, this is Merriam Webster. Um, to put into effect, execute, mm -hmm. to meet the requirements of, mm -hmm. to measure up, to satisfy, mm -hmm. to bring to an end. Um, Just read everything you have. To develop the full potentialities of, mm -hmm. to convert into reality, mm -hmm. to make full. Read. Um, and that's all that it has in Merriam-Webster. Okay, does it have the word performed in it anywhere? Uh, let's see. It's said to expedite. Um, to carry out as required. You're looking at the glossary? Uh, oh, I'm talking to your mom. Okay, right here. It, it says fulfill. Oh, it says fulfill. To complete, mm -hmm. to bring to an end. Mm -hmm. To carry out and obey. To carry out. To carry out something means to perform it. See, in order to bring something to an end, it has to be for performed. For Yahshua to bring water baptism to an end, it had to be performed. When he performed it, that was the fulfillment of water baptism. Okay? Now, <clears throat> reason why I have this up is because I'm, I'm going to try to hit two birds with one stone if I can. I, I've gone through this before, but we're going to show how Yahshua is going according to the pattern 
his actions and his movements, and how he is fulfilling the scriptures, as to say, the first speaker got up and talked about the migratory pattern. And it's very important for you to go back and read the story of Moses and the prophets. Okay. In fact, this is my my little uh, dicta, if you, if you will. You got to read. You have to read the scriptures. You have to read the stories. There's no other way around it. People say, oh, I got to read it. You have to read the stories. Be familiar with them. Right. Because they're going to form the basis of your correlations on these charts. So it's, and particularly the migratory pattern. Because the migratory pattern represents the greater and more perfect sanctuary, which is the universe. Okay? So that's what all I'm saying. Simply be familiar with them. Try to wrestle and figure out, well, what is the spiritual meaning of this scripture? Just read it to be familiar with the story. Okay? Next R. Research. There's nothing wrong with what we just did. We looked up the word fulfill. Right. That was research. There's nothing wrong, because I've come into words a lot of times in the, in the Bible that I don't know. It was one word I had never heard of until I read it in the Bible, and that was called winna. This is spelled W-I-N-N-O. -N I had never heard the word until I read it in the Bible, until I came into this class. And I said, winna, what is that? Then I looked it up. Uh, and it has to do with a process of separating the, the wheat from the shaft. But I've never heard this word, so, so it's okay to look up words you don't know or are unfamiliar with or research something, whether it be a historical thing. Or it, it's nothing wrong with research. Okay? Then, here's another R. Rehearse. Rehearse simply means to practice or go over it in your mind, or, or, or recite it, to rehearse the matter, right. see? Now these things, these are divine instructions anyone can do, okay? All right? And I feel that it is necessary for you to do, if you're in a school, and this is a school, right. so we encourage you to read, research, and rehearse. We encourage that. However, there's a fourth R involved here, and that and that's revelation. Now, that's Yahweh's department. Me or anyone else do not have anything to do with that. Right. That's 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 Yahweh's department because this this vision comes by revelation, and for you to understand it, it will have to come by revelation because people. For centuries, have read, researched, and rehearsed. They've done that for centuries. Right. But where was the revelation at? Mm -hmm. See, that's the point I'm making. See, here in this school, we give you and show you the tools that you need: these charts, these illustrations, the scriptures, and we encourage you to read the scriptures because what you see illustrated here. Is, is an illustration of those scriptures. So it would behoove you to read them so that you would know the stories. It would behoove you to research certain things that you may not understand or know. It would behoove you to rehearse the matter because we will ask you to come up here and not just listen here on the floor, but you could be, see, you could be on the floor anywhere, out in the street, in the mall, talking to somebody. I was on the floor when we came up here. He was downstairs, you know, because they asked me, yo, oh, you know, they're all nice. And so I come and said, no, I'm going up here to the Archetype Pattern Workshop. We can learn about, you know, some things about the Bible that you might not have known about. See? So you're always on the floor, whether it's formally or informally, right. out in the world. Okay? The thing of it is that what we try to do is to, for you to be prepared. And listen, here's something else. I'll say this, because a lot of people get, get, get twisted up in this. It's okay to say, I don't know, right. if you don't know. It's okay to say that because everybody, we, we all don't know everything. And, and, and even I have to sometimes say, I don't, you know, I really don't know. But I'll research it and see what, you know, what we can come up with, see what, you know, see what's up. And that's all, that's all we ask for you to do.
take the time. And, and for me, I, I simply put it like this. I'm, I'm learning how to follow Dr. Kelly's instructions. That's basically it. Because he left, he left a textbook, pamphlets, a myriad of audios, recordings that have been transcribed. You know, so he's left plenty of, you know, of instructions on how to go through these charts. See, and if you do it, and, see, and, and it's not like you, you're studying up on this. All you're really doing is you are reviewing the record. The record is already made. Only thing you're doing is you're reviewing it and you're investigating. With the hope that Yahweh will reveal something about this record right. to you. Okay? And another thing, I always like to say this. Don't let your research into these charts lim be limited to the day you come to class. Take the time, you know, when you ain't got nothing else to do. Sit down and open, you know, open up the little portables or your textbook and you know, just go through it. Right. You know, and see. You know, if you can see the relationship, the correlated relationship of what's on these plates, okay? Maybe I'll throw this in here while we had it. Uh, Isaiah 29, is it eight, you know, line upon line, that's what I want. 39 Yeah. <clears throat> what that? Isaiah. 28 and 9. Mm -hmm. From whom shall he teach knowledge? You see, now from whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Now, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. What do you mean weaned? In other words, that you, see, your milk all along the prophets, like the two breasts, you know, along the prophets. Now, to be weaned from that means that you have grown in stature so that you can go through this in an adult, mature way. See, keep reading. For precept must be upon precept. Now, precept must be upon precept. That we've told you often enough. See, here we got the spirit, the water, the blood. First John 5 and 7 said, there are three of their record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And these three agree on earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So these are the precepts or principles that you look for. The blood, the water, the spirit. In all of these plates. Right. In all of in their position here. Alright? Here's blood that's lined up to here. Blood on the altar. A sin and sacrifice. See, that's lined up to here, the blood on the door with the Israelites um, in Egypt with the Paschal Lamb. Here's a water line. Oh, keep reading, because I don't get to that. Precept upon precept. Now, the precept, see, the, the, there's a blood precept, and there's a water precept. That's on, The water precept is on top of the blood precept. Read. Line upon line. There's a spirit line, see? The spirit line is on top of the water line, which is on top of the blood line. Read. Line upon line. Line upon line. See? Upon line. Read. Here a little. Here a little. Go into the law. The first five books of the Bible. Read. And there a little. And there a little. The rest of the books of the, of the Old Testament from Joshua to Malachi. Here a little and there a little. That's where you're going to get your witnesses at. To confirm these principles that you see illustrated on these charts. Read. For with stammering lips mm -hmm. and another tongue will he speak to his, this people. Now see, if you didn't know anything about Moses, you was like, what is he talking about? But see, had you read Moses, you would know that. He complained to Yahweh, he said, look, I'm not the one to sin. I'm, I, I, I stutter. And Yahweh said, well, look, you know, your brother Aaron speaks well. I'll send him. He's on his way to meet you. You will be a law to him and he will be your prophet. The law and the prophet in principle coming down into Egypt to render judgment upon Pharaoh and his host. All these things are correlated, but you wouldn't know that unless you take the time to read the scriptures. Right. And you have to do that. A lot of people think they don't have to. Oh, it's all, you think you can study up on it. It's not studying up on it. Get that out of your head. You are reviewing the record. It's already here. All you got to do is look at it right. and review it. The record will speak for itself. This vision is not impotent or, or inept. 
It has the power to prove its own, you know, its own worth. It can do that. It doesn't need your help to prove it. Right. Only thing it needs, if anything, for you to stand up and open your mouth. And it will do the talking. If you understand what I mean. Keep reading. To whom he said, this is the rest mm -hmm. wherewith ye may cause the weary to wet This rest. is the rest. That's why Yahshua said, when he came, he said, look, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the rest. This is the rest. See, all this working up what we did. I know I grew up in church. I did a lot of this stuff. And it didn't do me no good. But keep reading because we want to get to our, our topic today. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. You know, yeah, but the people don't want to hear that. Oh no, I gotta get water baptized. I gotta eat the Lord's Supper. I gotta I gotta do I gotta do something. I gotta do some work. It may not be something, but it'd be something that you come up with. Right. You know. You gotta, you know, pray toward Mecca five times a day, you know, something like you know, come up with your own carnal witnesses. Okay, read. But the word of Yahweh was unto them, precept upon precept, mm -hmm. precept upon precept. Precept, look here. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Get it just little simple things. Keep it in your head. Because that's how you're going to attack. That's how you're going to measure these charts, these illustrations, the pattern. Remember that, the precepts. Line upon line. Okay? Read. Here a little and there a little. Okay. Mm -hmm. That they may, might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Okay, why? Because they didn't understand these simple precepts. When you understand these simple precepts, then nobody can, people can gainsay, or they can, uh, you know, say, I don't believe it, but they cannot truly refute it. Right. See? And that's the difference. Okay? Now, as we said, you have to have a knowledge of the tabernacle pattern, tabernacle pattern and the migratory pattern. These two plates here, there are seven steps, which means there are seven basic correlations between the two. Learn the seven steps and you have learned these charts. I tell people that, they say, oh, well, that can't be that simple. Oh, well, actually it really is. Right. If you take the time to walk to learn, Yahweh will reveal it to you. And see these steps, uh, over here, let's come over here. There are seven of them. See? First, number one, the gate. All must enter into the straight gate. Number two, altar of sin and sacrifice. With the four horns, the blood put on the four horns. Continual burning here. Number three, the brazen labor, which the priests and the sacrifices will wash themselves in. It also represents a washing of regeneration. Four, which is the door, the entrance to the holy place. At the door, you are anointed. The high priest was anointed with uh, a cup of holy anointing oil for, for his, um, to officiate in here. Right? That's at the, the door, which is an opening. The fifth step is the whole holy place. See, of which there's a, a lampstand, a golden lampstand, golden table of shoe bread, golden altar of incense. To put it succinctly, light bread intercessor. Also, because you're at the fourth step, there's a principle of 40. Most times it's manifested as 40. However, it could be simply four. Right. It could be 400. It could be 4,000. The best way to find out is simply read the scriptures. This is what I try to tell people, to read the scriptures. The scriptures most times will infer or tell you what the principle you need to use in that case when you're correlating. Uh, that's the fifth step. This is the fifth step, right? Okay, that's the fifth step. The sixth step is the second departmental veil of blue, purple, and scarlet. All right, that had angels embroidered on it. Okay, and that separated the most holy place from the holy place. And it's also called the veil of the flesh. This is the veil, come over here, that was written in twain, see this, these jagged edges, at Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. See, to open up a new way so that the holy place and the most holy place would become one. 
The seventh step is the Ark of the Covenant. See, with the two archangels on top of a mercy seat and the cloud that, that led them in the wilderness would sit on this mercy seat. Inside was the tables of uh, stone, the Ten Commandments rather, uh, pot of manna and Aaron's rod that butted into almonds, okay? Now, not just only knowing the tabernacle pattern and its contents, it is also helpful to know the priesthood because that's, a, that's an integral part of the pattern. And it's correlatable to other things as well. For example, we always say this, an atom is a proton, a neutron, and an electron. Three different parts, but it makes up one atom. However, the atom has forces in it. It has electromagnetic forces, it has gravitational forces, and it has nuclear forces, right. both strong and weak. Why? That's a reflection of the priesthood. Just as those forces move about between the particles, the priesthood or the priests, they moved about between the vessels. See? All of these things are important to know and understand so that when you make your correlations, all right, you'll have a better sense of what Yahweh is doing because one, he's doing it according to a tabernacle pattern. Right. Two, with Yahshua's case, his mission and the mission of John the Baptist together, their mission was to fulfill the scriptures. He's fulfilling the scriptures when he was John the Baptist and we left off and we said, read that, the, verse 13 again, 313 Matthew. Then cometh then come Yahshua from Galilee to Jordan, mm -hmm. unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I need to be baptized of thee, uh -huh. and comest out of me? Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. All right, for thus it becometh us? What do you mean? The Holy Spirit in John, and the Holy Spirit who was Yahshua, sorry, thus it becometh us to fulfill or perform or bring to an end all righteousness. Now the question is, what righteousness is he talking about? Right. See, because the righteousness that they could only have at that time was if they could perform these 613 ordinances. If you could perform these 613 ordinances, then you were righteous. The problem was none of them could do it. That's why the scripture says there's none righteous. No, not one. Why? Because none of them could... They couldn't perform this. That's why he had to come to perform this for them. Right. And when he performed it for them, he concluded it or brought it to an end so that he could bring in a New Testament written in the heart and in the mind. But to bring in a New Testament or a new covenant, the old one had to be fulfilled, had to be performed and fulfilled or brought to an end. Okay? Now, Let's get, uh, let's start on this because we're going to go through this plate. And I like going through this plate. To me, it is one of the easiest plates you can go through. And here's the reason why. Because there's ample scriptures that you can read that will tell you what's going on here. And then you can see the principles involved in it. Alright? This is also a fulfillment of Moses' first trip into the mount. That's why I tell people, if you read the scriptures, then you'll know what Yahshua's doing because everything he's doing or saying is a fulfillment of what Moses and the prophets wrote. Right. Okay? Uh, Exodus 12 and 1. Let's read this and we're going to look at it because see here, it says here, it says, a prepared sacrificial body. Now, that means this. Yahshua came into the world with blood running warm in his veins as a prepared sacrifice. Unblemished, untarnished. Okay? Exodus 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh -huh. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his house take it according to the number of souls. 
Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts. Okay, now, and, uh, pause, wait, wait. All right, now, go back to the previous verse you just read. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day uh -huh. of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it between the two evenings. All right, kill it between the two evenings. Okay, now. I had it read like that because you're reading from the Holy Name Bible, right? Yes. It doesn't read that way in the King James. Okay. Now, is this. It's taken out on the 10th, fell over to the 14th. That's four days. Right. However, it said killed between the two evenings. That's noon. That's when Yahshua, that's when Yahshua was put on the cross. Right. See, he was put on the cross at noon. You see, like, you see the point I'm making? So what this is showing you here, see, it's three and a half. From the 10th to the 14th, Killed between the two evenings, that's three and a half. Why? Because he's going to be held over to my Joshua for three and a half years of his ministry. Get it? See, before he is offered up. So the lamb, that's, for, that's a fulfillment of the lamb being taken out and killed between the two evenings, or three and a half days. Joshua was performing that. Then we come up here, we read about John's water baptism. We keep, go back to where you were at in the third chapter. Continue where you left off there. I'm over that. 3.13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start back again. We'll, we'll, we'll go over and over, over and over. I need to be baptized of thee, and comest out of me. Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answering said unto him, Permit it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Mm -hmm. Then he permitted him. Okay, then he permitted him. John baptized him. John, Yahshua was baptized. And see, look, Yahshua right here, he's representing the whole body of Israel. Right. And not just Israel, he's representing the world, because he got baptized for you too. Talking about you Gentile. So now he's that's a fulfillment. He's performing it. Okay? And why? Draw a line. Because we said line upon line. See, draw a line. Draw a line. And that's at the Red Sea. Right. Keep your finger there because we're going to come back to the third chapter and the fourth. Okay. All right. First Corinthians 10 and 1. First Corinthians 10 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud mm -hmm. and all passed through the sea mm -hmm. and were all immersed unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea mm -hmm. and did all eat the same spiritual food and did all drink the same spiritual drink. Mm -hmm. For they drank of that spiritual rock that led them and that rock was the Messiah. Okay, see they were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The cloud represents the spirit. Right. See, come back over here to John's water baptism. Read that again where you left off. Okay. And Yahshua answered and said unto him, 
permitted to be so now, uh -huh. for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Read. Then he permitted him. Yahshua, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Mm -hmm. And lo, the heavens were open unto him. Stop. Now the heavens were open. Why did the heavens open? Draw a line. Didn't the Red Sea open back here? You see the point of he's fulfill, everything he's doing is a fulfillment of something in the Old Testament. By deed or by word. Right? It opened up why? Because the Red Sea opened back here. Read. And he saw the spirit of Yahweh descend like a dove. By the spirit of Yahweh descend like a dove. Draw a line. That's like the cloud back here. See, they were baptized, talking about the Israelites were baptized in the cloud and in the sea unto Moses. Here's Joshua being baptized in fulfillment in the, in the River Jordan. And there's the cloud, the spirit, the dove here, unto John's water baptism. Right. And look, John is a fulfillment of Moses. Right. Moses was from the tribe of Levi. So was John. See? So this, this is how you correlate these things and also show, one, how Joshua's fulfilling it, Two, how he's going according to a pattern. Because we already got the death or the blood principle. Right. Now we got the water principle. And then we can talk about the dove. And that's the spirit. That's right there. That's blood, water, spirit. Okay. Keep reading uh, uh, Matthew. He saw the spirit of Yahweh descending like a dove. Uh -huh. And lightning upon him. Mm -hmm. And lo from heaven saying... This is my beloved son, mm -hmm. in whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. That's a fulfillment. What do you mean? Well, did the say in Isaiah, uh, was it Isaiah, not Isaiah, but uh, Hosea, I think it's 11 and 1, it says, Out of Egypt have I called my son. See? See, this is how these things are put together like that. Right. See? Everything he's doing is a fulfillment of what happened back here. All right? Keep reading. Then was Yahshua led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh -huh. Now he's up here in the wilderness of Judea. Draw a line. After the Israelites crossed over the Red Sea, through the, uh, miraculously dividing waters of the Red Sea, they find themselves in the wilderness of Sinai. Right. That's a fulfillment. Yahshua going into a wilderness is a fulfillment of the Israelites going into a wilderness. Wilderness. Read. To be tempted of the adversary. And, that, and that's what happened back here. They were tempted. I'm talking about the Israelites. They were tempted of the adversary. Maybe we'll get that in a minute. But uh, keep reading. And after he had fasted 40 days. Mm -hmm. And now he had fasted 40 days. And 40 nights. Uh-huh. And then he was hungry. Now, he, now why 40 days? Because that's a fulfillment of 40 years. Right. That the Israelites were in, in the wilderness of Sinai. Why? Because if you remember the story. They, they commissioned 12 spies to spy out Canaan's land. Two came back with a good report. The other 10 came back with a not-so-favorable report. And, the, and Israel believed the not-so-favorable favorable report. So they were punished a day for a year. That is to say, it took them 40 days to spy out the land. So they were punished a day for a year, ended up 40 years in the wilderness. Yahshua, a day for a year, is, out, is fulfilling that by being out here 40 days. That's a fulfillment of the Israelites being in the wilderness of Sinai, 40 years. Okay, keep reading. And then the tempter came to him mm -hmm. and said, If thou be the son of Yahweh, mm -hmm. command that these stones be made bread. Now command that these stones, why is he saying that? We got a pattern. See, isn't there bread here in the holy place? Right. Draw a line. Didn't they receive manna from heaven? Yes. All right, and look. These stones that, Yah that, the, that uh, Satan is telling Yahshua, well, there's some stones here. Why don't you turn them into bread? And see, nobody really understood. I never understood it until I came to this class what these stones were. See, these stones were set up as a landmark. See, Yahshua the Messiah, when he was baptized here at this point by John the Baptist, it is the exact same spot where the Israelites crossed over the Jordan, where the Jordan River divided and Israel crossed over. It's the exact same spot. And Yahshua's fulfilling that too. See, with the stones. Why? Go to Joshua 4 and 1. Keep your keep, keep figure there, because we're going to go through this fourth chapter. We're going to walk through it. Joshua 4 and 1. And it came to pass, when all the people were clean, passed over Jordan, that Yahweh spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe, 
a man, and command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, mm -hmm. and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Mm -hmm. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of Yahweh your Elohim into the midst of Jordan, and take you of every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, mm -hmm. according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. So they had to take out 12 stones, because there were 12 tribes. So they took out 12, and, and listen, these don't know loans. These are some big stones, you just read. They had to put them on their shoulder, you know. <laughs> Let's just let you know. They were some little bitty rocks or nothing, you know, but keep reading. That this may be a sign among you, mm -hmm. that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, what mean ye by these stones? What mean ye by these stones? That's the stones out here. See that Lucifer is telling telling Yahshua, well, see these stones, why don't you turn them into bread? See, but these stones were a landmark to mark the spot where Israel crossed over the Jordan, and Yahshua was baptized in the same spot. Right. See, so he's fulfilling Jot and Tell. Okay, keep going. Then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. All right, good enough. Now let's go back to Matthew. Just to show you, that, like I said, Dr. Dr. Kelly explained that about the stones. That blew me away when I read that because I had never, I had never heard that in church. And to this day, I ain't never run across any other preacher and thought that they, you know, think it's just some ordinary rocks, not realizing this was a landmark. Right. Okay, but keep reading. Then the adversary taketh him up into the holy city, mm -hmm. and setteth him upon a pinnacle mm -hmm. of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee to guard. Well, now, he, now, 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 the devil is quoting scriptures. Uh -huh. He's quoting scriptures to Yahweh. Let's read that. That's in Psalms. You know what that's at? Uh, it's at 91, I'm thinking. He's close to see, and look, and, and he's he's talking to the man, talking about saying he's talking to the man who wrote the scripture. Talking about Joshua. He's he's talking to him, so he said, yeah, well, you know, when you wrote this, dude, you know, that they was uh let's see, where's that at? Psalms 91 and 11. That's what it's at. Psalms 91 and 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, mm -hmm. to keep thee in all thy ways. Mm -hmm. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Okay, in other words, that, he, he say, that's like the other, he's saying, look, the angels will intercede for you if you jump off this temple. You know, they, they will intercede for you, and they'll, and they'll catch you before you even dash your foot against the stone. See? But we, I'm oh, sorry, not there, but back to uh, Matthew. Matthew, yes. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. Uh-huh, quote the scripture to him, go ahead. To guard, to guard thee in all thy ways, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt Yahweh thy Elohim. Mm -hmm. Again, the adversary taketh him up into an exceedingly high mountain mm -hmm. and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him. Well, let me come over here because this is a better illustration. He showed him all these kingdoms from Enoch, city of Enoch, Tower of Babel, Babylon, Medes and Persia, the Greeks, the world. He showed him all these kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. Okay, go ahead. And saith unto him, uh -huh. All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Who gave them to you, Satan? Right. Let's ask that question. How, how did you acquire them? You know, that's just how, what did the Jews call it? Chuzpah. You know, Gaul, the, the, the term, you know, you know, he got it from Yahweh and said, well, look, if, if you bow down and worship me, I, I'll give this to you. How did you get this? You know, really. Okay, go ahead. Then saith Yahshua unto him, mm -hmm. Get thee hence, Satan, 
For it is written, Thou shalt not worship, thou shalt worship Yahweh the Elohim, and him only thou shalt serve. Mm -hmm. Then the adversary leave with him. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Angels ministered unto him. That would that you could use that to show the principle of the altar of incense. Right. Angels came and ministered unto him. Why? Draw a line. See, wasn't there an angel in the cloud back here that ministered unto Moses? Let's, let's read that. Exodus 23 and 20. Exodus 23 and 20. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send an angel before thee mm -hmm. to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Mm -hmm. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. All right, see, okay? And just, just showing you Yahshua, you know, just for, I mean, you can do this for any of these things, but I chose this one because this one is really clear. I mean, you can walk through the scriptures in this fourth chapter and see what's happening on this chart. Okay, let's go back to Matthew. Now when Joshua had heard that John was cast into prison, mm -hmm. he departed into Galilee, mm -hmm. and leaving Nazareth, Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and the town of in fulfillment of that which is, was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, mm -hmm. The land of Zivon, the Zibalon, and the land of Natali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee, of the nations. The people which walketh in darkness have seen great light. Okay, they've seen great light. Why is he saying that? Remember, we're still in the holy place here on this particular plane. Right. So draw a line. See, so here's the light here, the lampstand. Right. All right, go back here. Remember, there was a cloud back here that they followed. It was a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. So they had constant they had constant light back here in the holy place. But the principle is the light. Here's the last stand here. That's the light principle here. See, because we're looking at this as a court roundabout holy place, most holy place, and you're just comparing, comparing the principles on here. Okay? Keep going. The people which walk in the darkness have seen great light. Mm -hmm. And to them which dwell in the region of the shadow of the death, light has shined upon them. Mm -hmm. From that time, Yahweh shall begin to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make thee fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from hence, he saw two other brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship from Zebedee, their fathers mending their nets. And he called them, and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Okay, now, why did they do that? See, why did they do that? Go back into the scriptures. Why, why, what would you think he's fulfilling by doing that? Telling them, follow me. And they follow him. What? Go back into the migratory panel. See? What were they doing back here? Following the they were following the cloud. You see? see? You see that now? See? And look, when the cloud moved, the Israelites didn't say, oh, hey, look, the cloud's moving. They were like, oh, the cloud's moving. Hey, they had to get up, they had to disassemble the tabernacle and all. You know, the cloud's moving. You know, why? Let's read it. Exodus 40, 34. And I'm going to see, I'm, I'm doing this like this so that you can see the basis for why Yahshua is doing what he's doing. Right. He's fulfilling Jot and Till of the law and the prophets. And he's doing it according to a tabernacle pattern. And the law of the spirit. Um, Exodus 40. 40, 34. 
Then a cloud covered the tent mm -hmm. of the congregation, mm -hmm. and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to... Wait, wait, what, what, what does 33 say? Maybe I'm Okay, 33. Uh, 40, 33. It's the verse of and he reared up the court round mm -hmm. about the tabernacle okay. and the altar. Mm-hmm and set up the hanging of the court gate. Mm -hmm. So Moses finished the work. All right, go ahead. That's what it says. All right, I'm sorry, go ahead. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, mm -hmm. and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation, mm -hmm. because the cloud abode there, and the glory of Yahweh filled the tabernacle. Read. And when the cloud was taken up from what over the tabernacle, Mm -hmm. The children of Israel went onwards in all their journey. In other words, when the cloud moved, they moved. In other words, when the cloud moved, in effect, it was telling Israel, follow me. Right. Get it? And they, dis and they disassembled the tabernacle, they ordered, and they followed that cloud. They didn't ask any questions. They didn't, like, well, why are we leaving now? Why are we? They didn't just say, oh, the cloud's moving, let's go. Yash was fulfilling that. He told the disciples. Follow me. Did they argue? Did they just say, just drop what they're doing? And they followed it. That's a fulfillment of Israel following that cloud. Okay? Uh, anything else back there in Exodus? But if the cloud were not taken up, mm -hmm. then the journey was till the day that it was taken up. In other words, when the cloud stopped moving, they stopped moving. Mm -hmm. Talking about Israel. But read. For the cloud of Yahweh was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was at, by night, mm -hmm. in the sight of the house of Israel throughout all their journey. That's it. All right, good enough. Let's go back to Matthew. And Yahshua went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel mm -hmm. of the kingdom, and healing all manners of sickness mm -hmm. and all the manners of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Samaria, and all brought unto him all sick people that were taken with various disease and tormented, and those which were possessed with demons, and those were that which were lunatics, and those that were paralytic. He healed them, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from the Decapolis, and from the Jordan beyond, and from beyond the Jordan. No, no, he missed it. You're missing a, 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 a line there. Yeah. From Decapolis and? From Jerusalem and from Judea and from the, beyond Jordan. And from beyond Jordan, which means on this side right. of the Jordan. Okay? Why it was happening here. In other words, he had multitudes, Yashua, because he was healing the sick and all. He had multitudes of people following him from across the Jordan. See, why? That's a fulfillment. See, because when Moses died, it was Joshua, the son of Nun, that took over, and he led a multitude across. You see that? And Joshua was fulfilling that. Okay, now to show that, uh, I think it's in Revelations. Yeah, Revelations. Uh, I think it's seven. Yes, Revelation seven, and. Uh, Four. Revelation 7 and 4. Mm -hmm. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All right. Now, when they came up out of Egypt, they were numbered. 603,550 came up out of Egypt, and this was the fighting men, not counting old men, women, and children. All that population died. Right. With the exception of Caleb, Phineas, and Eleazar. All right? And a new birth happened. All right? But they didn't know what was the number of the new birth. Moses didn't write it down. But John, looking back, he sees the number of the new birth that's coming over with Joshua into Canaan's land. And it's 144,000. 12,000 from each tribe. Okay? And that's just counting the fighting men. But now, if you jump down to verse 9 there, Revelations. Nine. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. See, now there's a great multitude that nobody could number. See, they numbered the 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe, 
the fighting men, but then, not counting old men, women, they, there was a number they couldn't even count. John is, he's looking back and he's recording it, okay? Yahshua's fulfilling it because we just read that great crowds followed him from beyond the Jordan. That's a fulfillment of Joshua. See, of a great crowd following Joshua the son of Nun from beyond the Jordan into Canaan's land. See that? Right. See, everything Joshua is doing is a, is a fulfillment of something the law and the prophets. You have to just go back and see where, what he's doing as. Okay? Uh, go ahead and finish that. I'm not sure. And of all nations, and kindreds of people mm -hmm. and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, mm -hmm. clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. All right, good enough. All right, go back to Matthew. All right, now we're at the end of we're at the end of the fourth chapter. Okay. And, and, and this we didn't skip. Enough. We just walked through every verse in that chapter, even from the third chapter, right. just to show you what's happening here. It's a fulfillment of what's going on in the tabernacle and the migratory pattern. Okay? Now keep reading. You want me to start the fifth verse? Fifth, we're the fifth chapter. And seeing the multitude, mm -hmm. he was he when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, mm -hmm. Thus are the poor in spirit. Okay, so now he's up here on a mountain. He's set on a mountain. Why is he doing that? This is a fulfillment of Moses' first trip into the mount. All right? Let's read that. We'll go back to Exodus. Uh, I'm thinking the 19, let's see. I'm thinking the 19th chapter now. I might want to start. Yeah, start with 19 and 1. Exodus 19 and 1. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Mm -hmm. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. All right, so now they came out, and this is June 3rd right. when they arrived here. All right. Uh, Jump down to uh, 9. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in the thick cloud, in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with, them, with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today, and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes, and be ready against the third day. For the third day, Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And I say now on the third day. So if they arrived there June the 3rd when they arrived, and they got to wait three days, that means Yahweh is going to speak to them right. on June the 6th. Get it? Mm -hmm. And that's important. See, June the 6th is when he spoke the law from Mount Sinai. When did Yahshua come into the world? It's June the 6th. The day of Pentecost. Right. What day was that? June 6th. Dr. Kennedy said he received a divine vision of revelation. What date was that? June 6th. Did you know how important that is? See? All right? Um, keep going. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, mm -hmm. Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not into the mount, or touch the border of it. Mm -hmm. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. Mm -hmm. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned, or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Okay, good enough. I mean, you can read the rest of it. I mean, because it's just letting you know they got they can't come against their wives and all that. You know, this was this was this is going to be a special event here, and we're going to show you why. Uh, Exodus twenty and one. Exodus twenty and one. And Elohim spake all these words, saying, "I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, 
which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no Elohim before me. Okay, now that's, what, that's what's happening here. He's, he's on the mount here. Mm -hmm. Come over here, dude. <clears throat> Here's the cloud on top of the mount. All right? And he's speaking down to the Israelites. They're around the mount. All right? They're not touching the mount, but he's speaking to them, and this is what he's saying to them. Read Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven idol or any likeness of any thing that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath mm -hmm. or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, mm -hmm. visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take away the name of Yahweh thy Elohim, to bring it to naught, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless, that taketh away his name, to bring it to naught. Remember the Sabbath day to mm -hmm. keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is then is, and rested in seventh in the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not commit murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, hold it right there for a moment. Okay, now that, that was the sermon, that was the original sermon from the mouth, all right, that Yahweh made to the children of Israel back here in the wilderness. Here's Yahshua, he's going to fulfill that. He's on top of the mount. All right, let's go back to the fifth chapter. We'll, we'll truncate it, fifth chapter, uh, verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them, by them of old time, thou shalt not commit murder. Mm -hmm. And whosoever commits murder shall be in danger of the court of justice. Okay, now, didn't Yahweh, didn't, didn't Yahweh say that thou shalt not commit murder back there at the mount? I know they said thou shalt not kill. People say, oh, thou shalt not kill. I mean, you, can't, you can't kill anything to eat. That's not what it says. It says thou shalt not commit murder. Because right. people will take that and they say kill. You know, See, it says thou shalt not kill. You know, like, and you kill it. You know, that's, that's, that's a mistranslation. Right. See, because if that were the case, then how could they make a sacrifice right. here? You know, that's stupid. Mm -hmm. See, and, and these are things you'll learn the more you indulge in these charts. Because, see, there are many versions of the Bible. You know, I'm, I'm willing to bet there's like three or four different versions just in this room. You know, I have a Stofield reference Bible. Who, who, who's got something different? Um, what you got? I got a, it's a, the Scoville Study Bible. The Scoville Study Bible. What you got over there? Holy Name. Holy Name Bible. Anybody got something different? I know. No, she didn't bring her Bible. That's what would be her Bible. Proper Name Proper Name version. See, so there's different versions of the Bible. However, there's only one prophetic vision. Right. And when you understand the prophetic vision that's laid out on these charts, the errors, and listen, there are errors. There's no such thing as a perfect Bible. Right. All of them got errors. Every last one of them. But see, you'll be able to spot the errors a lot more easily because you understand what the prophetic vision is. Okay? Um, so now he's saying the same thing here as it was said back here. See? Thou shalt not commit murder, okay? Go down to 27. 27. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, 
thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whoever soever look, looketh upon a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his own heart. And if thy right eye... Oh, I'm sorry, that's good enough. Yeah, he said thou shalt not commit adultery. Why? Because Yahweh said that back here from the mouth. All right, there's another one, 33. Again, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not swear to a lie, mm -hmm. but, thou shalt, but thou shalt make as unto Yahweh an oath. Okay, now in other words, thou shalt not tell falsehood. That, did Yahweh say that back here? Yahshua's fulfilling that. So this Sermon on the Mount, see, it's a fulfillment of Moses' first trip into the Mount. And see that the crowd he's got around him is a fulfillment of the crowd right. of Israel, the crowd of Israel around this mount, around this mount. See, and, and Yahweh speaking down to them. Okay. Now, to me, that was the simplest, one of the one of the more simpler plates that you can go through with scriptures. Okay, take the time and read the scriptures. The scriptures will tell you, a lot of cases, what the principle will be. Because these are just illustrations of the Bible. And you're comparing them with the tabernacle pattern and or the migratory pattern. Okay? And Yahshua, and as I said, I mean, let me, let me conclude this particular part. Get John. It's the last chapter in John. Him fulfilling 4,000 years of people, places, and things within the span of 33 and a half years. You know, I mean, I don't think you could build a library big enough to contain that kind of information. Okay? So what we do, we just show you what we can based on this vision, what Dr. Kinley received, and we show you the pattern in operation with this. And you see how Yahshua's fulfilling it. See? Going by the pattern, going by spirit law. Okay? This this helpful back there? This give you hope, maybe it made it clearer. You know, because that's basically all that you're doing. You're using the scriptures to see how these things are lined up. As Dr. Kelly was saying, it has to be put together in a way that has to make sense. Right. All right, and the only way it's going to make sense is by the pattern. See? <clears throat> and so I, I, because she asked her about the, about the focus, I picked this one because I felt it was one of the easier ones to go with. We just walked through the scriptures. That's all we did. Just walked through the scriptures. And the scriptures told us what we needed to know according to the pattern. See? And you're doing the same thing with all the other stuff. See, that's why all these things are correlated because it's all by the pattern. It's all correlated to each other, and Yahshua is fulfilling everything. Okay, let's see if we can mix this up a little bit. Pull something out to see if we can correlate something with what we already have established. All right, we just went through that. She pulled 29. That's the plate we just went through. Okay, we just went through that. We want to do it again now. Find another one. Maybe she'll pull 30. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll do 30. We'll do 30. We'll do 30. 
it's logical too. It's, it's a logical record because see, plates 29, 30, and 31, plate 31, which is, which is the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Joshua, those three plates represent Moses' three trips into the mount, which he's fulfilling. Okay? Uh, 30. Now you got 31, right? Let's see. Uh, 20, and 20 and 30. Yeah, yeah. 20's on the top and 30's on the bottom. Yeah. I, I didn't have nothing to do with this. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, when you're looking at it, see, you're, you're taking the time to see how the scriptures operate, and they, and they operate according to a pattern, okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, 21, it should be right next to that one. Yeah, yeah 26, you're close. <laughs> I can see it over there. <laughs> 30. 30. 30, yeah. No, 31. The, uh, yeah, may as well, because that, that'll make it easier for correlating. Here, plate 30. Miracles and transfigurations. I did this not too long ago. You know. <clears throat> uh, here, prepared sacrificial body. The same thing as we read for over here. He's three and a half years held over in his ministry to be prepared for sacrifice with blood running warm in his veins. Here, let's get Matthew 8.23. Here we got these guys that are in the boat. And look, let me say this, and I know I've said it often enough. You have to go back and read the migratory pattern, Moses and the prophets. You must know this migratory pattern. You must know about the events that's happening. Because, that's all, because in knowing that, that's going to help you in your correlations. Right. So it would behoove you to read the stories. Sit down and read the Bible. Okay? Matthew 8 and 23. Read. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Rabbi, save us, we perish. Okay, now, here they are, here they're in this boat. And I can tell you, man, being out in the water in the middle of a, of a, of a body of water is no fun when it's storming. I can tell you that from experience, you know, being in the Navy. And so now these guys were thoroughly scared that there was a big storm out here. And right and they're, they're out here in this boat and the water is just, it's just tremendously, you know, engulfing them. Okay, read. And he saith unto them, why are ye fearful, mm -hmm. O ye of little faith? See, now he was asleep here in the boat, and he wasn't worried about nothing, see? Kind of reminded me of Jonah, you know, because he was sleeping in the boat when things was getting bad. So now he, he, they wake him up, Master, and said, we're going to die, you know, but we... Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. Uh-huh. And there was a great calm. Okay, so now, the, so now the boat was inundated in water. They were at the point of death. And then he spoke to the wind and the waves, and they obeyed. And that's the spirit, that's the dove here, the spirit principle. All right? 
So we got blood, water, spirit, and principle happening here. And look, that uh, look, keep, uh, the reason why they obeyed him, the reason why the wind and the waves obeyed him because they recognized who he was. They said, oh, we know who you are. You were there at our inception. Um, here's, here's the days of creation. You were there at the beginning of our inception. What do you mean? See this heart here? See this heart up here? It's the same as this Eloistic body. That's why the wind and the waves say, oh, we, we, we will obey you because you were there at our inception. Okay? We recognize who you are. Okay? Read. And the men marveled, saying, uh -huh. what manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Read. And when he was come to the other side, into the country of the Gergesenes, Gergesenes, uh, there met him two possessed with demons. So now he's the two possessed with demons, that he had to pass through them. Why? Draw a line. Just draw a line. Come across. Draw a line. Why? What happened here? Look here. The Israelites, they had to cross, they had to pass between two mountains. Okay? So, you, so they had, so Yahweh had to split, Yahshua had to go between those two guys. Alright? And, and they were full of demons. And read. Coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so that no man might pass by that way. Uh huh. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, Yahshua, thou son of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Thou art come hither to torment us before the set time. Okay, I'm not going to do you like I did the lady up in, in Chicago, Carmela Ward. <laughs> I had to read it, reread it. She was like, oh, you know. You know, real scared. That was funny, but but they were horrified. You know, they were like, you know, whoa, what, what are we gonna do with thee? You know, Yahshua, son of God, have you come? What's that? Have you come? Have you come before the time? You know, the torment is. Have you come before the time? See, see, if the if the wind and the waves recognize who Yahshua is, don't you think the demons would recognize him too? Right. Okay, read. And there was a good way off uh -huh. from them a herd of many swine feeding. Uh huh. So the demons besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said unto them, Go. And when they come, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine. And behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place mm -hmm. into the sea. Now, why did they do that? See, draw a line. Here, didn't Pharaoh and his hosts run violently to the Red Sea? Maybe we should read that. That's in Exodus. Just to show you that. See, Joshua is fulfilling Jot and Tittle. Uh, it's the 14th chapter. And uh, 21. 14, 21. Exodus 14 and 21. No, I'm going to start with, uh, start with 19. And the angel of Elohim, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of, of the cloud went from before their faces and stood behind them. And it came between the camp and of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And there was a cloud and darkness to them, and it gave light by night to these, so that the one man, and one came out, no. one came not near, the other all the, all the night. All right, look here. See this circle here? See, half of it is light, half of it is dark. That's the scripture we just read. Right. It was light to the Israelites, because they're going forward, and the Israelites and the Egyptians are behind them, but it was darkness to them. That's why you see this half light, half dark circle here. We just read that scripture. Okay? Uh, keep reading. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh caused the sea 
to go back by the strong east wind all that night mm -hmm. and made the dry land and made the sea dry land and waters were divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground mm -hmm. and the waters were a wall unto them but their right hand and on their left okay. the Egyptians okay now let's 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 get a little perspective to discuss you we watched the movie the uh, the Ten Commandments, Cecil B. the Mills, he's got the waters separated hither and right. thither. And that's not how that went. See, see here, and we got it kind of halfway illustrated here. The waters heaped up and touched in the midnight. In other words, like this. And it was like a tunnel effect, all right, that they went through, like a womb, if you will, okay? And so they went across on dry ground. The waters put, you know, separated and they went across on dry ground. The Egyptians, they're looking at this too. They see this and they say, oh, well, they're walking on dry ground. Well, hey, they, they could do this. Hey, we could follow. But keep reading quickly. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them mm -hmm. to the midst of the sea. Even all Pharaoh's horses and his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch Yahweh looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariots' wheels and drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for Yahweh fighteth for them against the Egyptian. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of, the, of Pharaoh, and came into the sea, that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. All right, let's see. They rushed, they, they rushed into the divided waters of the Red Sea, just like the swine did. That's a fulfillment of that. And they and look, the swine were full of demons. So was Pharaoh and his host. Mm -hmm. They were full of demons too. See that now? Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, keep going. Go back to, to Matthew. And perished in the waters. And they that kept them fled mm -hmm. and went their ways into the city and told everything and what was befallen to those possessed of the demons. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Yahshua. And when they saw him, they besought him, and he would depart out of their coast. All right. In other words, they saw, you know, the, these people saw what happened. They said, oh, man, something's wrong. This must be a wizard or something. You know, they went to the city. The whole city came out and told us, look, man, you know, you need to go away from here. You know, just get away from here. See? Why? Because that's what, what that was told to Israel back here. See? They told the same thing. See, Israel, you know, do we have time? I well, may as well read it. Numbers 20 and 14. See, why did they do See, Everything he's doing is a fulfillment. You can find something about it back in the law and the prophets. He said Numbers 20 and 14. I believe so. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh, Kadesh yeah. unto the king of Edom. Yep. Thus saith thy brother Israel, thou knowest all the travail mm -hmm. that hath befalled us. How our fathers went down into Egypt and have all dwelt in Egypt a long time. And the Egyptians vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto Yahweh, he heard our voice and sent an angel and had brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we were in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost of the border of that border. Let us pass, I pray thee, mm -hmm. through thy country. We will not pass through the pills, nor through the vineyards. Neither will we drink, drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. 
we will not turn to the right hand nor to the left hand until we have passed through thy borders. And Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I will come out against thee with a sword. And the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway, and if I and my cattle drink of thy water, mm -hmm. then I will pay for it. I will only without doing anything else go through on my feet. And he said, Thou shalt not go through. Okay, and, okay now I have a map here. See, here's Edom. Here's what they said, the King's Highway. That's right there. See, they said, well, we'll just follow the King's Highway. They said, no, we don't even want you doing that. So they had to go way out over here, you know, come up. They had to, they had to avoid Edom, you know. They couldn't even use the highway. They said, no, we won't even, we won't even let you get on that. You go somewhere else. Keep eating quickly because we're almost And Edom came out against them with much people. They came out with much people. Wow. And with a strong hand. And with a strong hand. And Joshua fulfilled that. Right. Because after those pigs went to the city, they went back to the city. They came out and said, please leave here. Go somewhere else. You know? And that's, what, that's a fulfillment of what, of what happened back there. See, everything, when you take the time to look, see, you'll see the scriptures. The scriptures will help. The scriptures are your friends. You always remember that. The law and the prophets, they are your witnesses. And use them expertly. Because, you know, this is what's going to, you need to understand what's on these charts. Of course, it is by revelation. No one's dismissing that or discounting that. But Dr. Kinley set up a school of research so that you could you know, take the steps to learn about this and Yahweh in his own good pleasure will reveal to you the mystery that is illustrated on all these charts, okay? Uh, let's see, I only got a few minutes, but I'm gonna leave a slightly early. Um, here, see, now just, just see that, okay? We went through this before about his ministry and miracles. You can even go into the story where he fed a, uh, the 5,000 with two loaves of, you know, five fishes and two loaves of bread, that kind of thing. But usually, I go and get into Lazarus from the dead. Because see, like, because see, in that, you can see the light, the bread, the intercessor. All right, go just quickly and see if I can do a nice five minute run here. Get John 17, not 17, but, uh, uh, it's 11, yes it is. 11 and, uh, get 11 and 20, uh, 25. Now, Joshua's coming. He's coming to, to check on Lazarus. You know, he told his disciples, Lazarus is, is you know, right. you know, are, are he sleeping? Then they said, oh, well, if he's sleeping, he's doing all right. And then he had to tell him, no, he's dead. But for your sakes, I'm doing this because you're going to have to see who I really am, okay? And see, and this is what he told Martha, when, you know, because they said, well, if only you'd been here, right. you could have saved him. See, not realizing that this is who they were talking to. Go ahead and read. John 11 and 25. Uh -huh. Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life, and he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. All right, read quick. Keep your, finger, who, keep your finger there. Read John 1 and 4 right quick. Because he says, I am the resurrection right. and the life. And see, and, and, and what are we say, he says, I'm the resurrection and the life. What does he mean by saying, I am the life? John 1 and 4. Mm -hmm. In him was light, and the light was the light of men. It's the light of men. That's the light principle here. Draw a line. Lampstand, cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. Okay? Now go back to John 11th chapter. I'm doing this in a hurry. No, 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 no. Go back to. No, no. Don't, don't, we're, we're pressing on to uh, uh, 30, uh, 39. 39. Yahshua said, take ye away the stone. Okay, they took him to the grave. They, they, they said, take ye away the stone. We... Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Rabbi, where are they lifting away the stone? Why are they lifting away the stone? By this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead for four days. For four days. See, now this is the one he's praying. No, normally it would be 40 of the manifestation, but in this case it's four days. 
Why? Because it's pointing to the 4,000 years that Yahshua came into the world in the 4,000th year. So the four days in this, in this case, that's the principle there. Okay? Keep reading quickly. Yahshua saith unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of Yahweh? Mm -hmm. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Yahshua lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, and they may believe that thou hast sent me. Okay, so he prayed. Why did he pray? Draw a line. Where was prayer made back made in the in the tabernacle? At the altar of incense. The intercessor. You see that now? I'm just correlating this, okay? Keep reading quickly. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Now he said, Lazarus, come forth. Why did he say that? Remember, we was in the fourth chapter of Matthew. And see, and what did he say? He said, Man does not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. That's the bread principle there. See, light, bread, and assessor. Okay? Now, quickly get, since I'm on the roll on these, we'll get uh, Matthew 16 and 1. 17 and 1. Sorry, quickly. And I'll, and I'll conclude it. And after six days, Yahshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, mm -hmm. and was transferred before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as his light. Mm -hmm. And behold, there appeared unto him them Moses and Elijah talking mm -hmm. with him. Now look, we got Moses and Elijah. Moses, these are the one wearing the book, holding the book. Why is he holding the book? That represents the law. Elijah here, he didn't write anything, but he was a prophet. So that represents the testimony. Yahshua is flanked by his two witnesses, the law and the prophet. Quickly. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahshua, Sire, if it be good for us to be here, if thou wouldest, willest, let us make here three tabernacles, mm -hmm. one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Now see, why is he saying that? See, because, see, we got it over here, see? See, he's saying that because back here is a fulfillment of Moses' second trip into the mount. What happened on Moses' second trip? Moses was shown the tabernacle right. and the operation of it. Right. That's why Peter is saying that. That's a fulfillment of that. Keep reading quickly. While he had spoke, behold, a bright light overshadowed them. Mm -hmm. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now why is there a cloud here? See, draw a line. Wasn't there a cloud that was on top of Mount Sinai here that Moses went up? Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, the 70 elders here. Aaron is the elder, Nadab, and Abihu were brothers, the 70 elders. And they see this. Home over here. Here's Peter. He's the elder of the disciples, flanked by James and John, who were brothers. 70 were chosen not long after that to go out two by two. Okay, so that's a fulfillment of this back here, quickly. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. And Yahshua came and touched them and said, Arise, mm -hmm. and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man, save Yahshua mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. And as they came down from the mountain, Yahshua charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man, mm -hmm. and to the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Tell the Son of Man. Preacher still can't explain that statement. Risen again from the dead. What do you mean? That I means he lived before, you know, died before, resurrected before. He was Joshua, son of Dunham. We out of time. Keep reading. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say in the scribes that Elijah must come first? Mm -hmm. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Elijah truly shall come first and restore all things. But I say unto you, the Elisha is come already, mm -hmm. and they knew him not. And they knew him not. See, that's why we have Elijah. We have Elijah here, but it's also the same as we got over here, John the Baptist. See, that was prophesied. But something I wanted to bring up right quick, and I'm done. It was after six days that they went up the mount, meaning it was on the seventh day that they went up the mount. They went up the mount. Then they came back down the mount. That's 360 degrees, round trip. So what do you mean? Well, if they went up on the seventh day, 
and it was 360 degrees. A round trip, we multiply that together, that's 2520. In principle, see, because Yahshua has to fulfill that too. Look, we have it over here on the chart, don't we? 25, yeah, right over here. Right here. 2520, right here on the chart. See, because when they went up here, see, it was 2513 years when Moses went up here and saw the vision of the heavens and the earth. A day for a year, one day for a year, seven days, seven years. Seven plus 20, 2513 gives you 2520 here. So Yahshua's got to fulfill that. He went up the mountain on the seventh day and came back down the mountain the same day, round trip, 360 degrees, times seven. That's 2520 in principle here, fulfilling 2520 back here. Okay? Now that's just a small sample of what can be done with these charts. Once you begin to engage them, the more you engage these charts, the more they will engage you. See? And listen, follow the instructions that are found on the left. Take the time to read, research, and rehearse the matter. And with Yahweh's good pleasure, he will reveal this to you. See? Alright? That's why we call it a school and not a church. And it's not somebody's you know, brains or my brains or anybody else's brains. I'm just simply repeating that which I learned. See, from this great and awesome vision and revelation, and that if you take the time to engage it, it will engage you and it will teach you. It will show you things that are on here that you did not think were on here until you take the time to investigate. And that's all that we ask. See, you know, the only thing we ask you to say is pay attention. See, okay? Nothing to buy, nothing to join, nothing to sell. All right? We hope everybody was edified today. We thank you very much for tuning in. Um, as always, be safe, be healthy, but most of all, be in Yahshua the Messiah. Why? Because he truly is. You only hope of glory. And with those few words, hallelujah. Amen. from the last two verses of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.